All right. Welcome back, everybody. My name's Austin. The cryptocurrency market right now is heating up as Bitcoin just ended July at its highest monthly close since its peak in 2017. Meaning that other than the time we hit all time highs, Bitcoin on the monthly has never been higher. And we're talking about specifically monthly closes. Yes, last year in 2019, we wicked higher at one point, but for the monthly close, Bitcoin is looking bullish. Today we have big news involving Ethereum, Cardano, EOS, Chainlink. Of course, I wanna update you with our drama and YouTube. It's good to be back. But like always, let's first start with Bitcoin because this isn't just Bitcoin's highest monthly close since 2017. This was Bitcoin's 12th highest weekly close ever. And according to Jimmy Song, I suspect it won't stay 12th for long. This is Bitcoin on the weekly chart. As you can see, we are really moving right now, but I wanna answer the question, where is Bitcoin headed next? Because the beauty of Bitcoin, as opposed to gold or definitely stocks, is that it's all on an open public blockchain. So we have real data that I can share with you, which as investors can help us determine where this market is moving next. So first off, some interesting information from Glassnode, which is an on-chain market analysis agency. As of today, Bitcoin's UTXO realized price distribution, its URPD, is currently highly skewed towards profitability. Now, what is realized price? What is URPD? Well, this metric shows at which price the current set of Bitcoin UTXOs were created. Meaning each bar shows the amount of existing Bitcoins that last moved within that specific price bucket. So meaning it's at what price each Bitcoin last moved, really what the market was willing to pay the realized price of each Bitcoin. But the point is that now the Bitcoin is climbing, less than 10% of the BTC supply was last moved at prices above 11K. Now, what this means to you as a Bitcoin holder, this by itself is sort of a neutral metric. It's nice to see that there has been heavy accumulation between the $7,000 and the $10,000 price range. Bullish sign. Now, on this channel, we not only show you the data, we share with you what this means, what to expect based on the metrics that we have. Now, like we said, nearly 95% of Bitcoins in wallets are in profit right now. That number currently is still climbing. What this means, we, right now we are here, I'll show you this in a second, but we typically see this red line in the main part of the bull run to the top of the bull run, and we are nearly there. Check this out. Again, this is the percent of Bitcoin UTXOs in profit. This is this grayish line is Bitcoin's price. And historically, when we cross this red level, for UTXOs and profit. This started a year before the 2012 bull run, led the 2012 bull run. You can see we hit it in 2013. We hit all time highs about six months later. We hit it in 2014, hit all time highs price rise a few months later. And zooming in to the last time we hit all time highs in 2017, the percent UTXOs in profit led the price rally to Bitcoin at 20K. Like Willie Wu said, we typically see this red line in the main part of the bull run to the top, nearly there. Now, I wanna update you on Ethereum 2.0, as well as Cardano and EOS, but a friendly reminder that this may be our plan for Bitcoin to only consistently have bullish months till the end of 2021. But let's be smart investors. This is reality. Bitcoin pops, we consolidate, we form some support, we pop, consolidate, pop, consolidate, pop again. Let's be smart about this. During times of consolidation, that's when you wanna buy. One more quick metric that I think you'd be interested in is active entities, not just wallets, right? Because exchanges could have multiple wallets, a person could have multiple wallets, but active entities, that is to say active individuals or organizations, different entities determined by on-chain forensic clustering by Glassnode is nearing all-time highs last seen in the 2017 peak. Look at this. This gray line is Bitcoin's price action. We are here. Other than the 2017 top, we have never seen more active entities, individuals come on board and buy Bitcoin for the first time. Interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. But whether we spend August consolidating or the network keeps growing, there will be pullbacks, there will be shakeouts, 
but it appears, based on the on-chain data, that we are setting ourselves up for a potentially explosive end of 2020. Next piece of news. The Ethereum Foundation is building an internal security team dedicated to ETH 2.0. So what does this mean? Well, when they say internal security team, this will be focused on fuzzing, whatever that is, bounty hunting, pager duty, crypto economics modeling, applied crypto analytics, formal verification, anything to maintain the security of ETH 2.0. They want their blockchain to be the most secure and they're searching for talent right now. So what does this mean for you as an Ethereum holder? Yeah, I wouldn't want to see another blockchain rollback with the headline, coming soon, ETH2 Classic, ETH2 Classic token drop. Because as you know, there are two Ethereums. There's Ethereum Classic and the main Ethereum, which Vitalik develops on. Now, in the last few days, Ethereum Classic just had a 51% attack. We'll talk about it. But with this internal security team, the Ethereum Foundation is gearing up for the most secure ETH2 that it can. Very nice. Before we talk about Chainlink, Cardano's Charles Hoskinson to EOS's Dan Laramere, Hoskinson says that smart contracts and native assets are coming to Cardano in 2020. And these two hashed it out, fought it out on Twitter. Let me clue you in. This started when some person on Twitter called Cardano delegated proof of stake, which is what EOS is. Charles corrected them and says, hey, we aren't delegated proof of stake like EOS. Ouroboros is a completely new and novel protocol. People on Twitter called Charles incorrect. They said, no, Dan Laramir says that Cardano is delegated proof of stake. Hoskinson replied, Dan also said that our protocol doesn't work. He called it an 800 pound bulletproof vest that doesn't stop bullets, calling it useless. Now I'm sorry, whether you trust him or not, he lied and he's materially wrong about describing our protocol as a delegated proof of stake. Here is where it gets interesting. Dan replied, your protocol, Cardano's protocol, doesn't work for applications other than currency. The confirmation latency is too long for most of DeFi and completely unsuitable for most use cases. What are the material facts I'm wrong about? Well, they keep on arguing. I will cut right to the chase. Hoskinson again reaffirmed the information that smart contracts and native assets are coming this year in 2020. Our latency is lower than Ethereum's, the dominant DeFi platform. Hydra brings it to sub seconds. And to quote Satoshi, I'm sorry, I don't have time to explain it to you. Now, both Charles and Dan Laramir, Cardano and EOS, both are DAP platforms, and, it, and it's interesting, the experiments, which platform is going to reach mass adoption. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. But one other shot that was fired between Dan and Charles, Dan Laramir in this tweet thread admitted this. I have spent time watching videos and reading papers. I've even contemplated a bounty to implement Cardano's algo as a system contract for EOS IO chains. Then we could demonstrate EOS IO as the most flexible platform running the most peer reviewed algos. Charles fired back responding, so that's what you do with $4 billion? Meaning you had this nest egg, this treasury, and you're just gonna copy Cardano's algo? Or in other words, a $4 billion ICO, which was EOS, to set up a bounty to use someone else's open source software? Am I reading this correctly? I mean, I get that it would maybe be used in conjunction with their own stuff, hopefully, but that's kind of funny. So the DApp platform war rages on. Next piece of news before Ethereum Classic's 51% attack. Quick piece of news, Chainlink oracles are now powering dApps on Near Protocol. So what is Near Protocol? Well, again, it's competing in the DApp platform space and it's a sharded developer-friendly proof of stake public blockchain that's going head to head with Ethereum. Now it's interesting because many projects on Ethereum are using Chainlink and also now Near Protocol, Ethereum competitor, is also partnering up with Chainlink. Now for Ethereum Classic, and, and correction, Ethereum Classic was a target for a 51% attack, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen, and traders for ETH Classic were undeterred by the potential what could have been. This happened just a few days ago. A 51% attack is one of the only ways to compromise a blockchain 
and execute double spend transactions that credit the attacker with free money. Now, if you don't know what Ethereum Classic is, it is the leftover blockchain from the 2016 hard fork. We did a video on this probably two years ago. You can search that on Google if you wanna know the, the differences. But as for today, according to the head developer, the potential attack took place in the early hours of August 1st when somebody mined over 3,600 extra blocks on the Ethereum Classic blockchain. Now, this is one of the reasons why Bitcoin is king right now. It is the most secure, it is the most distributed, and has the most hash rate. As for ETH Classic, the attack actually didn't appear to be actively malicious. After research, the developer suggested that this could have been generated when a rogue miner lost internet access for several, several hours while continuing to mine. So really not a good look for Ethereum Classic if the network is so fragile that one major miner offline could sway the hash rate over 51%. But the good news is it wasn't malicious and traders weren't deterred from ETH Classic that much. That is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow. And I do want to say it is very nice to be back. YouTube, I don't know if you guys saw, um, if you followed us on Twitter, we got so much community support, so many likes, so many retweets, which truly does help. But YouTube over the weekend for a few days terminated our channel, said that we were encouraging bad things. Obviously a mistake. This channel only abdicates for legal stuff. They simply just turned our channel back on. They gave us no message of why it was turned off. They didn't even send us a message. They didn't even send us a message saying, hey, we're sorry, your channel is back on. They just turn it back on, which I appreciate. Now, YouTube will continue to be our main platform because that's where the discovery is. You know, hosting, we can host on any platform. The people, the masses, if we want mass adoption for our channel, the masses are on YouTube. The most immediate thing you can do right now is make sure you follow us on Twitter. There's links down below or follow us on one of our other platforms. Just wanna keep you informed. See you tomorrow.